Hello, this is my take on the post-truth world and how we might find fact as we wade through a flood of dung masquerading as information. As Tom Eaton wrote recently, we live in a world where fake news makes us doubt all facts and then makes us doubt whether facts even exist. This is how the post-truth world works. Jackie says to John, It's hot today. John shouts, No, it isn't. Jackie says, Oh, oh, I think it's hot. I feel really hot. John shouts, It's not hot today. Jackie says, But here in my hand is a Swiss calibrated thermometer with an internet connection to 35 weather stations for this area. It says it's 45 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. John shouts, It's not hot today. That's communist propaganda. Any crackpot with an idea, a conspiracy in his heart and Wi-Fi can create a website or pay someone to do it and then pontificate. Because what they say is on a website, Twitter, their blog or YouTube channel, there are vast hordes of ignorami prepared to believe what they say. Until very recently, social media refused to censor anything their users said. Crackpottery was entirely allowed and indeed encouraged. The Flat Earth Society is a great example. Staggeringly, there is a fairly large group of people in the world who think it is flat. These are not people living on a hitherto undiscovered island in the Pacific, but people with first world internet and what passes for schooling. In fact, there are any number of competing Flat Earth groups. Notwithstanding the fact that humanity has produced a goodly number of absolute idiots over the last 300,000 years, let's examine the phenomenon. There are certain things that we assume to be known. We do this by default. Not every human being needs to relearn the collective knowledge of all human beings from the last 300,000 years. What's more, we live in a data-filled world where we can only ever learn a tiny fraction of the total human knowledge. This was not the same for Ugg the Caveman. Ugg the Caveman had to know absolutely everything about his environment. To make fire, hunt food, chop off his son's gangrenous toe, navigate his blighted bit of forest, grow food, club neighbours to death, make babies, administer herbal remedies and perhaps even sacrifice rabbits to his deity. This is simply not the case anymore. We must assume certain knowledge in order to function as a society of specialists. For example, although most of us don't have the foggiest understanding of the sorcery that is the internal combustion engine, our lack of knowledge does not preclude our driving a car. You don't have to be a mechanic to be a driver. As children, we assume many of the things we are told are true. We have no other way of learning and no mechanism of testing what we're told until we're older, often with painful results. Don't play with matches, James, you'll burn yourself. Most kids believe their parents, some, like me, spend an afternoon with a blackened finger in a bag of ice before they understand that fire is hot. As we get older, we learn to be a bit more sceptical. We learn that people may, in fact, tell us pork pies from time to time. But there is still not enough time in the day to question absolutely everything. We do not need to be shot in order to test the assumption that guns can kill. We accept the third-hand evidence of others. We do not need to suffer amoebic dysentery to accept that washing our hands after taking a dump is a good idea. A healthy dose of scepticism is good. Hyperscepticism can be downright dangerous. The result of all this I found one day was deeply disturbing. Someone took me aside and told me that the world is not round. It is actually a flat plate surrounded by a wall of ice accelerating upwards at 9.8 meters per square second and that GPS, space travel and photographs of the Earth are all part of an elaborate international conspiracy. Now despite the number of ridiculous absurdities in this assertion, I realized to my horror that I was unable to explain the physics of how we know the Earth is round. I know I used to know it, but it was filed away with other assumed knowledge like bullets kill and hand washing is good after I've been to the loo. Aristotle more than 2000 years ago knew the Earth was round. Magellan did not sail his ship into an ice wall, but none of this matters to the believer. In 2016, the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson had a Twitter debate with music producer B.O.B. 
For clarity, the former knows that the Earth is round, the latter thinks we live on an accelerating disk surrounded by an ice wall. The music producer, with no more than primary school science, thought it entirely within his realm of expertise to debate a man with a string of physics degrees from Harvard, the University of Texas and a PhD from Columbia. Now I suspect quite strongly that NDT knows a fraction of what B.O.B. knows about music production, which is precisely why you won't find him mouthing off about it on social media. This is a great illustration of the problem. A man with absolutely no basis to be discussing physics has a platform on which he can spout utter cods and be believed. Indeed, Twitter went wild with thousands of people agreeing with Mr. B.O.B. This is the world we live in, a world where someone with a PhD in astrophysics is assumed, without any evidence, to be part of or conned by an elaborate international conspiracy. When presented with evidence, the doubters do not interrogate it, they simply dismiss it as yet another part of the conspiracy. This isn't a problem entirely of the internet or social media age, but these days the speed at which information, both garbage and truth, can spread is unprecedented. Books full of outrageous claims and wild generalization can be just as meticulously published and packaged on any range of subjects – politics, so-called science, health, psychology, you name it, and some crackpot will have published on it, and any number would have read and believed it. But a book takes a hell of a lot longer to circulate than Mr. B.O.B.'s tweets. So, if you're looking for the truth, and not just seeking to seize on any opportunity to confirm your beliefs and dismiss everything else as a conspiracy perpetrated by the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, Queen Elizabeth II and some reptile people, how do you find it? Here, for better or worse, are my suggestions. No matter where on the political spectrum you find yourself, you should not be getting your information from a politician. These are a breed of homo sapiens whose livelihoods depend on your believing what they say. They are not and never have been purveyors of truth for the sake of truth. Social media is a dreadful place to find actual information. It should be used for stalking old flames, finding new ones, checking up on your spouse, dopamine hits for likes, cat videos and marketing. It is not a source of truthful information. It is a place where anybody can say literally anything, no matter how f insane. Sadly, you will not find truth in your heart, no matter what the fairy tales, self-help books and life coaches might say. You may find what feels right to you based on your genetics, upbringing, schooling, last meal and culture, but these are the very things that make us all biased. Take care not to confuse opinion with news. These are not the same thing. Although various media houses are excellent at making us think what they peddle is news, when actually it is wild assumption and outright fabrication. News is factual reporting without comment. Opinion is just that. Opinion. Might be right or wrong, but it's an author's interpretation. Books. It's slightly more difficult to lie consistently and cogently for 120,000 words than it is in 140 characters. Yet books are still a minefield, especially if you buy one for the purposes of learning something you know nothing about. You have no way of interrogating what the author says, what they believe, what sources they have ignored, who funded them or how pissed off they were when they wrote it. Whatever you read, find out as much about the author as you can before you waste your money and your time. Who's funding them? Is their research peer-reviewed? Are those peers from an echo chamber? Do they have a political axe to grind? Asking these questions of our sources would go a long way to helping us separate the facts about COVID-19 from the utterly baffling barrage of contradictory, politically polarised, agenda-riddled horse dung we've been force-fed over the last year. On the echo chamber, try to escape. Steer clear of media that simply confirms your beliefs, accept discomfort, read, listen and interrogate the opinions of others. Media houses love to create echo chambers because they build reliable audiences. You don't need to be right. This is by far the most difficult one for me and most people who have an opinion. Except that if you're truly a truth seeker, you don't need to be right. If you can release the ego trap of needing to be correct, then a world of alternative views and points of view can influence your thinking. 
Lastly, don't be part of the problem. Please don't share unverified clickbait you found trawling the dark web after a bottle of vodka. Have the courage not to mouth off an opinion based on nothing but what you feel, no matter how powerfully you might feel it. What you feel, as I said, is influenced by hundreds of things. What you ate for lunch, the fight you just had with your bae, your upbringing, the news, the screaming child that kept you up all night, your jeans, the spliff you just smoked, the triple scotch you had with your prawn cocktail, the heat, the cold, the moron who just ran a red light in front of you. Now, I just need to follow my own advice. If you liked this video, please give it a and subscribe. If you didn't like it, subscribe anyway. There'll be further videos and you might like those or you might not.